Welcome back, everyone, to episode five. We have some really good news this week. We finally beat the Dinos, and I just wanted to go over everything that I did, kind of how we got there, and how it all began. So, you know, how we got into this mess with the Dinos in the first place, it actually is a long story, but I'll try to make it as quick and as streamlined as I can. But about two years ago, I ran into um, an issue with my ATO. It dumped about 10 gallons of water into my tank. And needless to say, it crashed my tank. I was on vacation, so there was really nothing I can do to salvage the, the issue. And at the time I wasn't running an aquarium controller. So since then, um, I've really learned a lot. And of course, after that, I got an aquarium controller, um, you know, obviously fixed the salinity issue, but it was too late. I lost most of my corals. So ever since that day, I've really kind of been battling one issue after another, just trying to get the tank back in balance. So I had a cyanobacteria issue I was battling for a long time. And then once I fixed that issue, um, I ended up using ChemiClean, I believe, which really just opened up the door to um, different kinds of algaes. Uh, mainly in this case, it was green hair algae. So if you actually go back into my channel, you'll see I was fighting green hair algae for a while. And then I beat the green hair algae. And soon after that, I had the dino issue. So long story short, I've been battling one issue after the other for about two years with this tank. And, um, you know, a lot of it has to do, I think, with the Carib Sea Life Rock that I was using. You know, it, it, it wasn't the sole source of the issue, but definitely made getting the tank back in balance much more difficult. But we're talking about the dinos here. So with the dinos, what happened was is the, the nitrates in my tank bottomed out. So how I beat the green hair algae was I had to lower my phosphates. So I, I was kind of getting lazy with the tank because, you know, quite frankly, it just, I just didn't like looking at it much anymore. It just wasn't very pretty, at least to my eyes with all the algae and this and that. So I kind of just slacked off with the testing and one day I'm like, look, you know, let me go ahead and, and test phosphates and just see where this is at. They were at 0.3, which historically for my tank was extremely high. I've always run, you know, really low nutrients because this tank in, you know, in its heyday was an SPS dominated tank. So you're looking at, you know, 0 0.02, 0 0.03, maybe 0 0.05 is usually where I was running the tank. So when I saw the 0.3, it, I pretty much had a knee-jerk reaction, went online, bought some, I believe, the uh, bio cubes or export cubes by Brightwell. And of course, I didn't read the directions before I put them in. I overdosed it and I dropped the phosphates from 0.3 to basically 0.05 in a matter of about, I think, two days. So... That's never a good idea uh, in a reef tank. So of course it killed my green hair algae um, very quickly actually. Uh, and along with, not only did I use the bio, the export cubes, uh, but I also started carbon dosing. Cause again, I was just like throwing the kitchen sink at this, basically doing everything you're not supposed to be doing. You know, you're supposed to be going slow and this and that, but I don't know what I was thinking, but that's what I did. And long story short, it, you know, my phosphates dropped really low and then my nitrates completely bottomed out. And I'll put, maybe I'll put some images on the screen showing, uh, you know, from Apex, some of those, uh, some of those screenshots of the, uh, the nutrients bottoming out. But, but yeah, it was not a good situation. Um, and it, it essentially just opened up the doors for the dinoflagellates. 
And, and that's usually the case, you know? I mean, if I don't care what you have. If you have cyano or you have, you know, dinoflagellates or you have anything, if you're going to knock them out real quick, especially if you're using some sort of nutrient control and you do it really fast, yeah, you'll usually take care of whatever it is you're trying to take care of, but then you're just going to open up the door for something else. And, and that's exactly what happened. So it actually really wasn't a surprise for me, but... What was a surprise is that the type of dyno that I ended up getting was a type that I never had before, which was the large cell, I believe the amphidiums or something like that. I don't know exactly. I'll, I'll put an image up on the screen of what they look like, but from what I can tell, they're not or they aren't the type that go in the water comp, so you can't beat them with UV. In the past, I've gotten the you know the ones that a lot of people get where you know forms like slime and and usually you can just put an oversized uv in the tank and kill those off pretty quick usually within a week um, i've always done a blackout but i've i've been hearing that you actually don't even need to do a blackout in those situations but in any case i i tried the uv it didn't work now i didn't actually have the right size uv come to you know come to find out but either way it wouldn't have worked anyway so I had to, you know, do some research and find out, you know, what is the best method to, to get rid of these dinos, at least the kind that you can't just put a UV in there and expect to, to solve the issue. So um, like I was saying in the previous videos, I came across um, one, I believe, Jason, I believe his name is, yeah, Jason Mack, I believe. He has a Facebook group and, uh, you know, a lot of people trust his his words of advice and some of the things that they do on that group. So I just, you know, I did, I'm not part of Facebook or anything like that. So I just watched a lot of the YouTube videos on the subject and pretty much the advice was consistent across the board and that what you want to do is you want to um, outcompete the dino. So you're not actually killing the dinos directly um, such as, you know, with a UV or anything like that. So now out competing the dinos, well, what does that mean? That means, well, first you're gonna need to um, identify the dino. So, and, and more even more specifically than identifying the dino, but taking, taking a slide or a sample of whatever it is you're looking at and at least in my case, what I found out is when I took a sample of the sludge or the dinos, whatever, whatever you want to call it, um, what I saw under the microscope was it was just dinos. There was nothing else. There was, there was no diversity, in other words. It was just the dinos. And so I was like, okay, well, now that kind of makes sense because... You know, if you're going to want to outcompete these, obviously you're going to want to start introducing other microfauna, other things in the tank. So in my case, um, it was just the dinos. There was nothing else. So I said, okay, well, this is definitely the way to go. So I did. I did that. I I followed a lot of the recommendations, and what I did is I started dosing silicas. So. I believe the formula, and I'll, I'll put this up on the screen as well, it was uh, one, um, basically one dropper, dropper full, because I was using the, the Brightwell, the Brightwell silicates, so this is a 110 gallon tank, I was using, at first, one dropper full a day, which is way more than the recommended dosage on the bottle but the recommended doses on the bottle is really more for like feeding your corals and uh, feeding your sponges and that this was actually to induce a diatom bloom something to outcompete the dinos so I was dosing one um, dropper full of that a day and then I started increasing the dosages and I, I believe I got up to like almost six droppers a day um, after about maybe six or seven days because I just wasn't seeing anything. I tested for silicates using, uh, I believe it was the Seachem um, test kit. And I verified that the Seachem kit was working because I tested my tap water 
and the tap water had insane amounts of silica. And then I ta uh, test my uh, RODI water, it had zero. I tested the tank, it had zero. I even did the, uh, you know, the, the test where, you know, you're testing for ultra low uh, amounts of the silicates. And even still, I never, I never did. Even with doing six dropper fulls, I never got a registered reading on the test kit. So whatever I was putting in, basically the tank was sucking up and using it. So along with dosing the silicates, I was dosing, and again, this was for the first like maybe seven, seven to 10 days. And, and I was also doing the uh, manual removal. So what I learned with the manual removal is you have to use a five micron sock, not you know 100 micron or 200 microns. No, you have to use the five micron. And what that'll do is that will basically take out everything, even the dinos. So I was sucking everything out. I was doing a light brushing on the rocks. I didn't want to go too crazy, just getting the real egregious stuff off. And, um, and then I was dosing different kinds of uh, pods. So I first, I believe I first dosed the Galaxy pods, and then I dosed the Tisby pods and the tigger pods now on one of the live streams that i watched i was hearing that actually the tisby pods will eat the dinos directly i never verified that with the microscope but i say what the heck let me just try that too so we tried three different jars of pods and these are all from uh, algae barn and then uh while i was uh or after i dosed the pods i i was dosing about 20 to 30 milliliters of the Ocean Magic live phytoplankton, and that's just basically to help uh, feed the, uh, the copepods and keep the population going. So yeah, so we were doing that, the mechanical filtration, the, uh, the pods, the live phytoplankton, and then uh, the hydrogen peroxide. So I was dosing uh, at first, I was dosing about 11 milliliters a day of hydrogen peroxide, and I would do the hydrogen peroxide to where if I saw a clump of the dinos or even if I saw a patch of cyano, which at first I had like a couple tiny little clumps, I would just basically take a, you know, a syringe or, or whatever, you know, whatever I had on hand and just kind of blow the hydrogen peroxide dose directly on it, and it worked really good actually. It would basically kill any of the, the nuisance algae that I blew it on, and it would not kill the corals. So, for example, on the GSP wall, I would blow it pretty much directly on it. It had zero effect to the coral, but it would kill whatever the nuisance algae was on it. So that was great. So now I have a newfound love for hydrogen peroxide, and I'm definitely going to use it more in the future. Uh, definitely didn't have any negative effects on the tank, so that was great. So above and beyond that, I did uh, also dose the Aquaforest Life Source. So that specifically is designed to uh, increase the uh, microbiology in the tank because it's essentially just mud from uh, a pristine area in Fiji. And then I also, on the off day, so I would do that one day. And then on the off day, I would dose Microbacter 7. So I was do basically dosing um bacteria um the, aqua, the aquaforest life source will is actually a flocculent as well which basically means that it will take the little particles in the water and, and clear up your your water in that way too so the bacteria and the the flocculent will clear up your water and it does work very well so i'll probably be dosing that continuously in the future obviously not as aggressively but you know here and there i'll dose it just because i think it's good practice um, so yeah, overall, you know, it was pretty, pretty easy as far as it sounds like a lot, but it, you know, I would say total time spent a day was maybe 20 minutes tops. And, uh, and the real magical thing was, um, I don't remember the exact day, but I'll, sh I'll definitely show the progression, uh, on the screen. Um, I believe it was maybe day 10 or somewhere in there. But that's when I started seeing the diatom bloom. 
So when I started seeing the diatom bloom, uh, uh, specifically on the walls, uh, the t you know the tank walls, basically just looks like a brown coating. It's it's pretty ugly, but clearly it's not dinos because the dinos, you know, they have these little like snot bubbles all over it, and these didn't have that. So I was like, ooh, I think we might have some diatoms happening here. So let me go ahead and bust out the microscope and take a look. So when I did that, I noticed it was a whole different story. What I saw under the microscope was, I mean, completely different than what I saw when I first started this journey with, you know, battling the dinos. And, uh, and you'll see on the screen that there is a bunch of different stuff in there. You could see, you know, at least two different types of diatoms, at least that I could, I could see. Uh, there was a bunch of these like worm things and unfortunately I didn't get a, a video of it but the one uh, imaging that I did of it um, I swear I think these little worm things were eating the dinos because I could see under a microscope the little dinos in its body like almost like a snake with with the dinos in it I, I wish I I wish I would have recorded that but I didn't but I believe that those little things were eating the dinos and and on the slide too you can see that the dino is basically just like dead um so it definitely worked what i did worked and um you can see on the bottom of the tank there's still a dusting um but those are uh diatoms which are fine those um will basically fizzle out after a while once you stop dosing the silicates what will happen is the diatoms will just consume all the silica silicates and then eventually they'll just go away on their own. Um, so yeah, the, you know, obviously super stoked that we completed this and we did it without having to bust out the UV. And um, so yeah, very excited about that and, and just getting ready for these, uh, these coral to grow. So another thing I want to talk about is that, you know, with these type of dinos that, you know, go into the sand or go in the rocks, at night or when the the lights go out i think i think you could probably beat these with uv i believe i saw a reef dudes video where he was uh checking out i guess one of his buddies tanks or a fellow reefers tanks and and he said he got rid of it by putting an oversized uv in there and basically just blowing the rocks every day and just stirring up the sand and basically getting it in the water column and killing that way and i and I, I can see how that would work. I just didn't have a UV on hand. I didn't want to spend, because it's expensive. You know, when you're talking about these big units, the kinds that you need, it, it's pretty costly. So, um, you know, I think that is a possibility. Um, I just didn't do that. But yeah, I just thought I would, you know, share the excitement here of, of finally getting these dinos beat. And now, as you can see, we've got nice, pristine, live rock with no nuisance algae on them just coralline and hopefully these sps can can start to take off so well i'll tell you what i'll leave you guys with um slides of some new corals that i got and just want to kind of document it you know what they look like right now because we're going to do these you know weekly uh, maybe not every week moving forward but you know maybe every two weeks maybe even every 30 days and then we'll kind of document how this coral grows out and then we'll also document, um, you know, any updates and any progressions that happen with the tank. So, yeah, so I'll leave you guys with that. And I really appreciate you watching and uh, we'll see you on the next video.